Hello everyone, this is Dana from Dev Device, and today I have the special honor to have the wonderful Amy Wies on my podcast. Hello, Amy. Hello, Dano. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Oh man, it's uh, I cannot tell you how excited I was the whole day, you know, looking forward to this appointment that we have and now we're actually here and we had a podcast together a few months ago, ago I think. We were talking about the VLC stuff and uh, and I've been following you all this while and I think uh, there's no conference where you don't speak. If I'm not mistaken, I mean, you're like everywhere you speak, you are the, I think you are the VIP woman in the Amazon space right now. Am I right or not? Oh, you're so nice. There's, <laughs> there's lots of conferences that I don't speak at, but, oh. uh, but I'm always honored. You know, I, I'd love to go to events and learn and soak up the knowledge. Even if I'm not speaking, I love to support event hosts and help them promote their events. I love to host my own events. So, you know, for me, um, a few years ago, I made this commitment that, um, you know, me and God had a little talk and I was like, all right, I'm well, going you to talk to God. Oh, yeah, we have yeah. to get back to that. You know, oh, okay. Talk. Go on, go on. <laughs> and when I told God, I was like, all right, I am going to boldly walk through every door that is open. And even if it doesn't seem like an opportunity or it doesn't seem like the right fit, if the door is open, I'm going to be in, open to those insights, you know, open to looking for open doors and boldly walk through those doors. And um, so I made that commitment about two years ago. And that meant that I, I said yes to a lot of things that I was like, oh, I don't know if this is a good <laughs> fit. I don't know if, you know, this is whatever. I just said yes. And, um, and that really was huge for me. It just yeah. transformed so many things, just being open to that. And so that's what started me speaking at all these events. And um, I mean, I was already speaking at a lot of events, but like I was just going, doing, looking at different opportunities even outside of e-commerce. That's how I became a, a board member for my inventors group here in Texas. Um, you know, just little inventors things like that. People, yeah, people would reach oh. out and say, "Hey, you know, I, I saw you here. Do you do you want to do this?" And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> all right." Yes, I do want to do that, <laughs> even if I didn't want to do it, right? It was like, okay, yes, I made this commitment. And I just was open to it changing my life. And, um, and it really did. So that's how, you know, I really built a lot of relationships and, um, and was able to, you know, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have uh, started the only multi-category trade show in Latin America last year. Um, I, you know, exactly. I wouldn't have done so many things that I've done. So, yeah, so that kind of is, I guess, a way to look at why I'm everywhere. <laughs> if we had to write a list of all the things that you're doing, like these days, would like one A4 paper even be enough to, to fit all these things? Or, I mean, <laughs> I mean um, just, just, just tell us, just summarize, like what, what okay. is Amy doing these days? Like so, apart um, from amazing at home. Which, which yeah. is, I'm guessing, your main business, right? But but please uh, tell us about Amazing at Home first. What, what what do you do with this? Yeah, so Amazing at Home actually started as just a community. Um, I, when when I got started, I got started um, selling in e-commerce in 2007, and I was mm -hmm. in the United States Air Force at that time, and what? I was also going to college um, while I was in the Air Force. The Air Force has kind of a program where you can go to school. So I was going to college. I really wanted an education. Um, it was important to me. I come from very poor beginnings. Um, I was raised by a single mother. Like we didn't, we didn't have money. That wasn't a thing, right? So I knew that education could get me somewhere. And um, I tried to get an education on my own and pay for it on my own. And it was just really hard. It was hard to work full time and go to school. So I joined the military because that gave me the opportunity to have my schooling paid for and to travel the world. Um, and so, you know, I was in the military and going to college and I Are saw you a pilot. No, <laughs> no, I was actually a war planner. 
So um, my job was to work with all the different forces and um, work on different um, war plans around the world. Um, mm -hmm. And then later on, I moved into cybersecurity uh, because I got a master's degree in cybersecurity. And so then I you know, moved my career over to cybersecurity for the Air Force. Uh, so that's you studied I... cybersecurity while you were in the Air Force? Yes, right? I went to the University of Maryland and got a master wow. of science degree in cybersecurity. Right. I also have an MBA from the University of Maryland and three undergraduate business degrees. One, um, sorry, two undergraduate business and one in aerospace technology. Um, wow. So, you know, I just kept going to school because I'm a sponge. I love to learn. Um, and when I was going to school, I wanted to sell my textbooks because, you know, textbooks are so expensive. I did have to pay for my <laughs> own textbooks. So I went on Amazon to find textbooks for University of Maryland. And I saw this little button on Amazon that said, sell yours here. And this was back in oh. 2007 before, like, you know, Amazon was mostly books at that time. Like some. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's when Amazon was a bookstore, right? Yeah, for the most part, like they, they did have like media stuff and they had they started selling like other like used things. Um, so yeah, I started selling my textbooks on there and it was just a hobby. You know, I was selling a few things on eBay. I was just doing whatever, you know, I've always had like a little side hustle kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I got started. And then in 2017, I was working, um, here in San Antonio for air forces, um, cybersecurity. And, um, I, had this pain point, <laughs> I suffer from chronic severe migraines, which means I get 15 or more migraine headaches a month. Um, or oh, what? How long, yeah, they take? How, how long do they, they last? Um, they're awful. <laughs> um, luckily, I've gotten them under control now. I've taken a lot of measures in my life to um, be on more natural medicine, to get off of the, so many medicines had so many side effects that made everything even worse and gave mm. me even more rebound migraines. So now I'm, I'm doing much, much better. Um, mm. but back then I was having them all the time and, um, and trying to work full time, staring at a screen, you know, that was really hard with fluorescent lights over me, which was another trigger for me. And then I'd come home and I have three cats and the litter box smell would trigger migraines and we were trying what? to yeah and we were trying to clean it like a couple of times a day as that's like a best practice but it still was just awful and i didn't want to get rid of my pets and i was like okay you know i have to figure this out because we really haven't innovated on this product at all like you know i've tried every kind of litter box whether it's automatic or whatever <laughs> you know it doesn't work so mm. Every time I would travel, I traveled a lot, like 10 months out of the year with my cybersecurity job. Um, mm. Every time I would travel, I would just like, you know, have more time, you know, uh, to kind of think about it and work on it. And so I would sketch, you know, okay, what's this solution to this problem? And, um, and I, every time I'd come up with a sketch, I think it would maybe work, but then it would just be like, no, this is basically just an alternative to something I've already tried not going to work. It's not going to work. So I almost gave up on it. And then one morning I woke up at like two o'clock in the morning and I just had this like aha moment. And I was like, oh my gosh, the problem is the litter box. Like that's the problem. We need a separate device to clean it. And so I woke up and just started like taking apart different um, components in my house, trying to like do something at two o'clock in the morning. Right. And then as soon as Home Depot, which is like a local hardware store here in America, as soon as it opened at 7 a.m., I went and I grabbed all these different components that I thought would work for a prototype. And I came home and I built two versions of this prototype and I dumped the litter box into it and it worked so well. It worked so well. And um, so, so one second, huh? So yeah. you built you built your own litter box for pets. Litter box cleaner. Yes. Litter box cleaner. You built it yourself in yes. order to kind of Find a find find a treatment for your migraine. Yes, a solution that, that, to the a solution. Smell. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and really, you came up with a concept to build this litter box that would kind of not smell anymore. Yeah, so it's not a litter box, and that's what's confusing. I actually created a new category, right? The problem was the litter box, right? You know, you trying to build a self-cleaning litter box, that's what doesn't work, 
right? Because mm. it just stirs up all the mess and it still mm. smells yeah. even after you clean it. So, you know, I was like, okay, this is the key. And so I actually have a little prototype here on my desk. This is huh. a printed version of it. Um, this was one of like my early prototypes and now the product looks very different from this. But in the beginning, I used this quarter inch hardware cloth. Um, and the idea is you just, you know, so I own the utility patent. I have a utility patent for this product. Um, I, I have the utility patent on sifting or straining anything with a holding bin underneath. So if oh. you invent a kitchen strainer that has a holding area underneath, you're in a violation of my utility patent. So um, mm. that's what I did is I wanted something that you could basically just or the litter box into and then so all the waste goes into this giant scoop and then you just get rid of all of it at once and then this has a little foot built in the side so it stands up on its own and then the clean litter's here and you just pour it back into the box so you can clean like three litter boxes if you have three cats you can clean three litter boxes all at once you just dump them all in here get rid of all the waste at one time and then you clean you put the clean litter back in the box so it's a very simple device <laughs> but dano literally like we were using this prototype i didn't know what was going to turn into a product on the market i was just trying to solve a problem right we were using this prototype and all of a sudden i thought i was just inventing something to make it easier to clean right because we were scooping like twice a day um but all of a sudden i didn't smell anything anymore and i was like how is that possible and so I invited my friend over to the house who has dogs because I was like, maybe I'm just nose blind because I've been trying this prototype so much, you know? So I was like, you know, come over to the house and tell me, like come into my little laundry room where I have three litter boxes that I haven't cleaned today. I cleaned them yesterday. I was like, tell me if you smell anything because I don't smell anything anymore. And I'm like, I'm wondering if I'm losing my mind. And she came over and she was like standing in that little laundry room. And she was like, that's incredible. Like literally I'm looking at a litter box with stuff in it and I smell nothing. And so then I knew I was like, oh my gosh, I have to bring this to market. I have to, this is a huge problem. And even now today we've sold over a million dollars in, in litter box cleaners and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's the I had no is, idea you were in the litter box business, Amy, no <laughs> idea. <laughs> yes. I mean, the shit sifting business, Dano. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so, you know, it's, it's crazy that, you know, we're talking about amazing at home. You asked me about amazing at home, but the thing is without this problem, without the cats, without me creating this invention, amazing at home wouldn't exist. Um, you know, as I there like, you go. like God always has other plans for us. <laughs> like here, I thought that I was, I was like my primary, you know, thing was inventing this product and bringing it to market. But really, um, you know, uh, in God, whoever you, whatever you believe in, right? Something bigger than yourself, right? Is, uh, you know, God's plan was, um, no, you're actually meant, this is just a pathway to help you help others and connect in a way. Um, so yeah, I found the process of bringing this thing to market. I knew I had to bring it to market. I knew I had something. Um, and I found this process to be very challenging for me. And I'm not, you, you know, I got all these degrees. I've been in a primary male dominated career. Field. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> not a lot of stuff intimidates me anymore, you know? And so I was like, okay but i don't know how to do this i don't know how to take this prototype that i built and turn it into like an actual product on the market and oh by the way there are so many scammers taking advantage of inventors like so many like oh i'm a product designer i can help you with your invention you're going to be a millionaire let me take thirty thousand dollars to turn your drawing into another drawing so I was working with all of these product development companies and they wanted like insane money, like $25,000 for the first round for us just to put, you know, your drawing and make it another drawing. And then another $25,000 to make your, your, to, to find somebody to make a mold for you. And then yeah, another $50,000 yeah. 
to do this. And then by the time you get to market, you've spent $300,000 and they don't even do anything for you on the market. And I was like, no, I'm done. So I just was, I said, people bring products to market every single day. Every single day, companies bring products to market. I was like, this cannot be the path. And Dano, I let that part of people trying to screw me. I was like, okay, we're going to see how this goes. I'm on a mission now. I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to help as many people as I can along the way. And that's what I did. And that's how amazing at home was born is because I was like, look, I started cold calling manufacturers. I built my own 3D printers. I knew how to sell on Amazon because I'd been selling on Amazon for a long time. So I was like, I'm going to share for free with whoever will listen. I'm going to figure this stuff out. I'm a smart girl. I'm going to figure this stuff out and I'm going to just plow over all these scammers and just do whatever I can to help as many people as I can. And that is what I did. And so I started creating these free videos. I have goosebumps, Amy. I have goosebumps. <laughs> Good. That's, I mean, that's the thing is like, you know, I started creating these free videos online. I'd be like, hey, guys, this is what I learned about patents today. This is what I learned about creating listings. This is what I learned about getting molds made, you know, whatever. I just shared it and, um, and people started following me. And then I had um, these molds to make this product cost me $42,000. And that was very expensive. This is a large product, right? So it's very expensive and I was really needing, I didn't want to go into debt that way. Um, so I started copywriting because remember my background is cybersecurity. So I was good yeah. at like taking keywords, fitting them in, right? So I'm a little bit techy. So I was like, okay, I can do this. So I was selling wholesale on Amazon at the time and I was taking my wholesale products um, and like just rewriting listings and finding like new, new loops for them. And so I started on Fiverr, I put a service on Fiverr to copyright for people. And I was taking people's saturated products and putting them in new categories with new keywords and they were selling out of these saturated products. And they were asking me to consult with me. They'd be like, Amy, can, can I, and even my free videos, you know, people were asking me, can I consult with you? Can I sit down with you? I'll pay you for your time. Like, you know, and I was just oh. like, at the time I'm still working full time for the Air Force. And I was like, no, I, I don't. Time. So yes. that was all a side hustle. Oh, yes, yeah. this is a side hustle. It <laughs> never occurred to me that I would need to quit my job bringing this product to market. Like I just didn't, my mindset wasn't there, right? And so people started asking, they were like, you know, can I just sit down with you and just talk with you? And and I was like, no, I don't, I don't do that. Like I'm not a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> That was before your yes face. <laughs> before. <laughs> yes, I was like, you know, I don't consult. Like, I don't just whatever. Like, I'll, I'll copyright your listing, whatever. But I, I don't, I don't consult. So people just kept asking and kept asking. And finally, I was like, okay, fine. Give me fifty bucks. I'll meet you on Google Hangouts. I'll do the best I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, those people had incredible success. And, um, you know, some of the, some of the gurus that you see in the space right now are, were some of my first clients and, um, oh, shit. and the, you know, it was just beautiful to see them. Come on, bring up some names. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, well, um, yeah, for example, um, I work, do you know, Jamie Peros? He does skew drop him, yeah. and some stuff out in Australia. He, we mm -hmm. worked together when he first started his Amazon business. So it was mm -hmm. kind of fun. Um, so anyway, um, and Christina Erdemskaya, you know, she's an eight figure. So she's mm -hmm. way past me now, but you know, I helped her when she was initially getting started. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so just anyway, um, but yeah, so that's that is so unbelievable. I, can, I really cannot believe your story. I mean, <laughs> Okay, just I just wild. have to process this, you know, this sequence of events is so unbelievable. But yeah, it go really, on, go on. <laughs> it really is. And so, you know, I started consulting and started helping people. And before I knew it, remember, I still had a full-time job. So I would come home from my job and I had coaching calls at like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. And then I'd go to bed, I'd get up, go to work, and I'd do it all over again. And then I started like on the on the weekends, I'd have coaching calls like all weekend long helping people. And I was just like, this is insane. So then I started um, 
I, I built this website. Amazing at Home is actually a domain name that I owned. It wasn't even supposed to be this consulting firm. Like it was just a domain name. And because I had so many, many people booking with me, I needed some place. I needed a website where I could automate this because I was literally just like calendar, sending manual links, like not doing anything automated. I'm the queen of automation. Like everything that mm. I do now, the way that I get things done is automating. And oh, yeah. uh, systems. That is another right? topic. I'm I'm very looking forward to dig into, but yeah, yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, like, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on Amazing at Home, but that's how it started is I just built this yeah. website over the weekend and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And then I quit, I quit my job. I, I had a mentor tell me like, Amy, you have to quit your job. And I was like, what? I can't quit my job. <laughs> I pay the mortgage. Like I can't quit my job. And you know, I made six figures in my in my cybersecurity job. So I was like, I can't just quit that job. That's a really good job. And you know, I, I can't mm. quit it. And um, and so like, you know, I was like, okay, he he helped me. His name's Efton and he helped me. He was like, Amy, we're gonna make a plan for you to quit your job. Like we're we're going to come up with so I made a plan to quit my to quit the Air Force, basically. Um, and I quit the Air Force. And um, right after I quit the Air Force, I took people to China. I met people in China and um, took them to the Canton Fair. Um, I did the Canton mm. Fair experience with uh, Stephen oh, Selfie. Oh, I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so the we Canton started Fair. meeting people in China and taking them on factory tours and you know, teaching them how to talk to factories, teaching them you know, how to really source products at an advanced level. So I learned so much doing that. It was such a blessing to me. And it also was a really great blessing to, every, to so many other people because now they had a safe person to come that they could trust to come with to China, right? Mm. They could go to China finally and, and actually learn this stuff. And it, you know, removed a lot of barriers. Um, so that's, that happened. And then, um, then COVID hit and i was supposed to keep going to china and keep doing all these things and i was like okay what do people need like always you know i'm trying to serve i'm trying to help like that's my mission right so i was like what do people need so i created really inexpensive training i was like all right i'm going to help people write their listings i'm going to help people launch products i'm going to help people develop products so i developed courses during the pandemic i started with a listing optimization master class then I did a 60 hour graduate level concept to launch course, which teaches you every step along the way, like everything from coming up with ideas for products, developing products, sourcing products, setting up your business and your websites and launching your products. Uh, and then after that, I did another course called It's Time to Brand, helping entrepreneurs build their brands off of Amazon. And I turned that into a book that I just published. Mm. Uh, and the whole thing I made super affordable and super accessible. So like, it's like a month to month program. You can cancel anytime. So it's like, you know, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to access my, my education material. You can pay month to month. And then you just like, when you're done, you can leave or you can come back. Yeah. I've had people with me for years um, mm -hmm. and I love it. You know, to help people build up their businesses, exit them, you know, and so, then, you know, going to all these events and everything I, I met up with, I began during the pandemic to think about sourcing outside of China. And, um, and Mexico was hot, you know, people were like, I really want to source from Mexico, but there's no um, websites there. There's no Alibaba, right? So I met Tim Jordan in at Prosper. He was helping me. This is our first time um, ever like meeting in person. We knew each other online. But we met at Prosper, which is this big event in Vegas um, for mm -hmm. sellers. And we got to talking and he had done some stuff in Guatemala and he was also interested in doing sourcing in Latin America. And he had also done things in China. And so I was like, Tim, Tim, let's get together and let's bring people to Mexico. And so we were going to do a sourcing trip to Mexico. But the problem, Dano, was that um, was that there's no multi-category trade shows to take people to. In China, we can go to Canton Fair, we can go to Iwu, there's so many opportunities. In Mexico, there's nothing. There's there's single trade shows, like, you know, if I want wood products or whatever, but there's no multi-category. So Tim 
is a big visionary. Like, you know, he's, and it's great when you're an entrepreneur, something that you need to learn is you're not going to be great at everything. You might be more of an artist and less of a risk taker. You might be more of a, you know, all of us have these different, you know, you might be an integrator, you might be an operator. So you need to surround yourself. If you're going to build something bigger than just self-employment, you need to surround yourself with those other pieces of the puzzle. And Tim, for me, is a visionary. And I'm not a visionary. I'm an artist, right? Like I'm the Michael Jordan, like you, you need it mm-hmm. done. Like I'm really good at it and I'm going to get it done. Yeah. Right. But, and I'm an operator, but I'm not a visionary. Um, I, I have big visions, but, but Tim has really big visions. Right. And he was like, we're going to throw this, we're going to put on the Canton fair of Latin America. Oh. And I was like, you're insane. That is, that is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're insane. But okay, like I committed to this, so let's do it. And we have done two trade shows now. Um, we have, you know, the Mexican government has really helped us. We've gotten a lot oh. of people on board um, and it's been incredible. So we, we, we yeah, it's the, that's the biggest thing I've ever done. Um, and as we see- So you brought Canton Fair to Mexico. Yeah, early. our own version, yes. So no, <laughs> it's definitely, I mean, Canton Fair is 60,000 flyers. It's the size of three yeah. airports. Like my little trade show in Mexico does not compare, but we do have a lot of different categories and we are teaching. Part of our mission is actually educating suppliers as well. We have training yeah. for suppliers to teach them because they don't know how to work with e-commerce brands. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a twofold mission. It's been a gift. It's been a really incredible. Um, and and you're then, creating so much opportunity for the local factories, the manufacturers, and for the you know for the ecom people in the US and wherever. So I think it's amazing to just cultivate you know this new market opportunity and yeah. do you speak Spanish. A little bit. Yeah. Well, I used to be fully fluent and then I moved to Germany with the military and I learned German and then. Oh, it... you speak in Deutsch. Very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, so I do need to work on getting my Spanish back. I understand Spanish, but um, I don't speak it with confidence anymore because of my other languages have kind of messed that up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's been a, just a total. You know, I'll never forget, Dano, when I went to China for the first time and I had all these people meeting me there. And I was standing in this huge, like, penthouse suite at the top of this hotel looking over all of Guangzhou. And I was just overwhelmed with gratitude. And I was like, what am I, what am I doing here? How did I get here? Like, I'm getting emotional because it's... Um, I have no idea how all this happened. I have no idea, um, but it's it was incredible, you know. And then to be standing uh, in the trade in the Expo Center in Mexico City, this was inside of the World Trade Center in Mexico City for our very first Evo Latam, and seeing over seven hundred people walk in the door, and <laughs> uh, you know. I had people coming up to me at Evo Latam in Mexico City that lived in Mexico and said that they had been following me for years and that I inspired them to start their businesses. Wow. And that they, they were so excited that I came to Mexico because they got to come and meet me. And um, <laughs> these are the kind of messages that I get every day. <laughs> It's absolutely overwhelming. And to stand on that trade show floor in Mexico City and look up at the big rafters and the signs and the main stage and all these vendors that were there. And I kept telling myself, I was like, this is my trade show. <laughs> this is my trade show. Like, I can't believe this, you know? And um, I, I don't know how- It is unbelievable, Amy. It is unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know how I got here. <laughs> I don't know how I got here, but it's um, it's absolutely incredible if you just let go and you see what you know what it is that the universe has for you. It is um, a wild ride, and it hasn't been easy. Um, there's been a lot to learn. I've had to learn how to not be. 
uh, self-employed. <laughs> I've had to learn how to build a bigger business. I've had to learn how to um, be humble and continue. To, I've had to learn that I don't know anything. I, I never know anything. Like I know a lot, but I really don't know anything. I have so much to learn. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited about learning and um, and yeah, just to think that, you know, here I still have my brand and, um, and you know, we've had seven, seven figures in sales. And then, you know, I have Amazing at Home where I get to help so many entrepreneurs and we've helped thousands of brands launch now. And I still have my China sourcing trips. You know, we're going again in October. And mm -hmm. this, this summer I'm going to Jordan to now my friend Tual, um, he is from Jordan, and um, so we are going to Jordan to train suppliers there how to work with e-commerce brands. Oh. Um, oh and that's happening. And then we're going to do a sourcing trip to Jordan next year. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to Israel to speak at an event. Um, and then I'm going to Fiji in July to go to Life and Wealth Mastery for Tony Robbins. And then... Oh. In November, I'll be in Australia speaking at Southern Seller Fest and just seeing everybody in Australia. It's so wonderful. I got to do that last year. Um, so just so many, you know, I've been to London speaking at Danny McMillan's events, um, to France, hanging out in a castle with Howard Ty and his group and, you know, dancing the night away in this castle. And, you know, just I can't I can't believe um the, I'm so grateful to e-commerce because uh, I just feel like, wow, what a wild ride. And if you're open to the opportunities and you're open to actually connecting with others in this business, you can really have the just most beautiful connections and friendships and you can build incredible things. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so blown away. I can't even believe it. And I'm just like having gratitude every single day. Oh my God. I would say this is the way, Amy. This is the way. I mean, it's, this is, this is really, I mean, I, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. I mean, <laughs> this is just really amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's written on the wall behind you. So yeah. <laughs> That's silly to me. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know how to comment on this. I mean, this is just like something where we should sit down, you know, and meditate for a while and just let it sink in. Yeah. I try to do that. Um, you know, it's not to say that I don't get stressed out. It's not to say that um, that my businesses sometimes don't uh, take take over and you know become their own yeah, yeah. monsters. <clears throat> you know, so that's. That's the hard part is remembering, you know, my mantra all this time has been enjoy the journey because there's so many stressful things. Like when I started my brand, um, you know, and really was going through this process of inventing this product and getting it to market every day, I would be like, is this worth it? Like I'd had so many doubts and fears and I'm like, you know, oh, just and that's why you have to have a really strong why. You know, for me, I knew that I never wanted to go back to scooping a litter box ever again. And so <laughs> I knew that I had to keep going with this product. I had to because I knew other people would want it to. And that's what kept me going. Every time I ran into a snag along the way, every time I needed money for molds or, you know, my mold maker actually quit on me and we had to destroy the mold and I had to start completely over. And I had a GoFundMe campaign and backers and I had to explain to all these backers like, hey, it's going to take me probably another year to get this product out because the mold, oh, we had wow. to start over with the molds. But I kept going. I was like, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. Everybody needs this product, right? So I just, I just kept going. And, you know, honestly, what kept me going with, you know, with Amazing at Home and everything was all of the people, the people who, who would reach out and say, you know, you helped me, you changed my life, you know, that kept me going every single day. Um, and just, I mean, just the spirit of like, how can I help? How can I help and, you know, and add value um, instead of worrying about making money, you know, mm -hmm. um, knowing that everything is going to be okay, despite the fear. 
And then also just taking the time. I mean, planning is really, really key for me. Luckily with my background in the military, doing planning and operations that really, really helped me in my business because mm -hmm. whenever I would get stressed out in the military with my teams, whenever I felt like everybody was kind of all over the place and like doing their own thing, I'd be like, stop, everybody stop work right now. Get over to this whiteboard. We're having a planning session. And the team would be like, oh, oh <laughs> we don't want to do it. But we always came out of that with clarity. You know, we came out of it with clarity of like, okay, now we know who's doing what, we know where we're going. And so I do the same thing with my businesses. Every time I get stressed out or frustrated, I'm like, stop, stop, pause, time out. What's the outcome we want here? What is the outcome I'm going for? Not what's the to-do list, but what do I want to accomplish? What's the outcome that I want? And when you focus on the outcome, suddenly all those things on your to-do list look a lot different. You're just like, whoa, okay, here's the 20% that I have to get done. Everything else doesn't matter. You know? And so that, that has been really key yep. for me. And then the second- That is, that is uh, let me set the marker for a short video here. This is, these are words of wisdom from Amy. So yeah, I think this is really relevant to keep focus on the actual goal on, you know, on your mission, on the bigger picture, instead of uh, like working through your to-do list. I think this can make a very big difference. Yeah. I think and whenever you get frustrated and stuck in your to-do list, just stop and go, okay, wait, what are the outcomes that matter to me right now? And then revisit your to-do list and look at the 20% that are going to make 80% of the difference. And then everything else, who cares? You know, otherwise we'll just keep spinning our wheels. And so many entrepreneurs get stuck, especially in e-commerce. You know, we get stuck of, oh, you know, I got to make these sales. I got to sell more. I got to do more. And it's like, sometimes you stop and you go, wait, what do I actually want to accomplish? Okay, well, well, this thing over here doesn't really matter then. Like, why am I spinning my wheels with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it's it's really good to do that. And that's what I do yeah, with yeah. people on coaching calls. Like, you know, we sit down and we talk about what is it that you're trying to accomplish and mm -hmm. let's get a roadmap to get you there so that you can slow down and actually slow down to speed up, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing I would say is buying back your time, right? Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half through. I'm halfway through the book. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it. Yes. Yeah, so, so I've yeah, actually little backstory. Amy actually recommended this book to me. I think last time we spoke was uh, on on Messenger actually. Yeah, and I, I I bought the audiobook and yeah, it's it's a great book. It's uh, it's about yeah. Go on. You know better than me what it is about. <laughs> so um, you know, I've read a lot of books over the years. I'm a big reader. I usually read an average of like three books a month. Um, wow. but between audiobooks or whatever, right? I'm always reading. I love reading. I love listening to books. You know, I love knowledge. I'm a sponge. Um, and so, you know, I've read a lot of books. I uh, love Mike Michalowicz's stuff. I love The E Myth. Um, the E Myth is a really good book to just kind of make you have that aha moment about your, your business. But uh, Dan Martell, he runs a SaaS mastermind. And I've actually been in his SaaS mastermind um, along the journey. I had a PPC agency with my podcast partner, Andy Arnott, and um, <laughs> we've done a couple of different things um, together. But Andy introduced me to Dan Martell. And we did a uh, one of Dan Martell's SaaS masterminds together. And Dan is just incredible. He's so good at teaching you, you know, how to do funnels, how to make your website your 24-7 sales page, how to communicate what it is that you do to your audience. Um, and, you know, it's just really, really awesome. And so we had Dan Martell on our podcast. Uh, Andy reached out to Dan and asked him, you know, if he'd be on our podcast. And he was, and he, it was at the time he was launching this book um, called Buy Back Your Time. And he was on the podcast talking about this book. So if you guys go to sellerroundtable.com, you can listen to uh, the podcast with Dan talking about this book. It was just incredible very inspiring. And uh, so the, um, you know, he talks about this book. And so I was like, well, I have to read this book, you know, so I get this book and I start listening to it. And Dan is an incredible storyteller. And 
the one thing that, you know, of course I've read clockwork and the e-myth and I've done all these, um, the hiring, you know, and I've, I've got a good team now, all that. But the one thing that I struggled with letting go of, which a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with letting go of is my email. I was oh, like, yeah. there's no way I can let go of my email. Nobody can answer emails like me. Nobody like the, there's no context. Like I've got, to, I'm a consultant. I'm a consultant. I have to answer my own emails. And so many other people struggle with that too. That's what Dano and I were talking about. He was like, yeah, I can't let go of my email. And Dan in this book, he gives you a system that makes sense. He, he neuro linguistic programming, right? Like Tony Robbins teaches, you got to have the pain associated with something has to be greater the pain associated with not doing it has to be greater than the the pleasure or the confidence you get in doing it in order for you to change that habit. And so what he does, what Dan does in this book is he paints this picture that's like that helps you realize like the pain of you continuing to manage your email is going to be so great and it's going to impact your ability to grow in such a way that you have to let it go. And then he eases you into it because he goes, don't worry about it. I've got a system that works and he gives you that system, that step-by-step -step system. So I went into it and I let go of my email and I followed his system, his checklist, everything, and they work. Um, and so now I have an assistant Maverick. He handles all my emails. So you might send me an email. You might get a response from good old Maverick. <laughs> and, yeah, I've, I've, I've been speaking to Maverick a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he takes He's my best friend already. <laughs> <laughs> he is so good at that. Yes. And, you know, and, and the thing is for those emails that I need to respond to, those go into one folder and that's the folder that I check now. And so I still check my email, but I'm not filtering and doing all the work. So it's just, and that has really changed everything for me where I used to get stuck. My email box ran my life. Oh, yeah. I was in there every I day. I can so relate to that. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> email is, I mean, that's where we expect all the good news and the bad news to come to <laughs> us. and. This is the one, you know, this is the juicy part of our entrepreneurial life in a way, but it also yeah, sucks up a lot of time and there's a lot of nonsense in these inboxes. Yeah. Yeah. And think about, you know, if you have somebody that can basically summarize that for you and put the things, you know, you have ways that you respond to certain emails and that can be templated out. Right. But then the rest of the things that come in that you actually need to look at, you're just paying somebody else to filter that for you you as a business owner should not be filtering your email every day like I agree. let someone else do yeah. that and then over time the things that are in the amy folder you know over time some of those things then can get passed off because i'm like okay a, a quick question I, uh, yeah. what, I mean what email platform are you using i mean i'm using apple mail so is that possible even because this is a desktop solution or are you doing everything on on gmail or what how to well, organize this system? so the thing is, yes, I do everything in Gmail. So I just give okay. but you know, he can access mine with Gmail. But the oh, thing okay. that you can do, though, remember, you used your mailbox's settings to set it up in your Apple Mail. Mm -hmm. So your assistant can do the exact same thing. They can set up your email in their Apple Mail or wherever they want to put it, Gmail, whatever, right? Yeah, and yeah. then if for some reason it doesn't work out, you just change the password and you're good to go, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's not, it's not a situation where, you mm -hmm. know, Oh, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, you've lost everything. Um, and then what some people do is they create, you know, if they, if it's an info email or for me, it's like Amy at, right. Um, well then in that case, I can give somebody else access to that. I have the mail settings just like for mm -hmm. our Mexico stuff. We have several mailboxes. We've got sales, we've got operations we give instructions on how to set those mailboxes up. So all you're doing is you're giving your personal email to whoever's managing it for you yeah, and they're yeah, filtering yeah. it. So you're still getting all those emails. You can still look at them, but you should only be looking at that one folder. And now full disclosure, I'm still new to this. So I still sometimes go in my inbox and go, Ooh, <laughs> sneak peek. 
I, I do, I do, um, you know, and I get in there, but I'm, I'm getting better. Following Dan's system, you know, every week we meet twice a week, we go over everything, you know, we have an agenda, we follow Dan's agenda to, to do that. And it's really, really helpful, you know, it gives you that peace of mind. So yeah, I highly recommend it. I know, you know, everybody here, you're probably not at the point, if you're listening to this right now, you're probably not at the point where, uh, you might not be at the point where you are ready to give up your email, you know, but you should be thinking about um, buying back your time because there's a difference between self-employed, right? Like creating a job for yourself and then growing to where you actually have a business that you don't need to be in, right? Exactly. That I felt a like I- Very big difference, yeah. Yeah, and I felt like I grew when I really had this reflection that I had really grown was when I went to per I went to Peru for a week long wellness retreat with my friend Nate Ginsberg, and um, it was an incredible week. But I did not even bring my laptop. I told my team like, guys, I'm not going to be there. Like, I'll check my I'll check my email once a day, like on my phone, you know. But that's everything else like I need you to take care of. And they were like, yep, we're excited to take care of it. We got it handled. And I knew they did, you know? So, but the thing is to get to that point, I had to take myself out of all the processes in my business. I couldn't, I couldn't be the linchpin that, or the, you know, the, the stop gap, you know, that holds that thing together. So I had to make sure for all these processes, any orders that came in, cause we do copywriting, you know, that kind of stuff. I had to make sure that that someone else could handle them start to finish. A lot of it I've been able to automate, right? Using Zapier and Asana, I've been able to like, okay, email comes in that matches this criteria, create a task in Asana, assign it to this team member. And then we've oh. created, yeah, and we've created template tasks for all of our, all of our things that we do. We create template tasks in Asana. So when we have, um, for example, a, tip Tuesday post on our social media calendar. We have a social media calendar project in Asana and that tip Tuesday post just gets duplicated, right? So like when you're on the podcast, the podcast gets turned into a blog and we do all this SEO and everything. All of that's in an SOP, but that SOP is embedded into a template task in Asana. So whenever we have a new one, we just copy that template down, change the title, and now the, the SOP is right there for them to access. The subtasks are right there, and then we just mark them until they're done, and then it, it's complete, right? So for us, wow. same thing with onboarding new employees. We built template tasks for that. So now every time we hire somebody new, we have a template task. Okay, here's how you set up your Clockify. Here's how you set up your Loom. And so the template tasks are numbered. And then when we bring on somebody new, we go through and we just duplicate them and assign those template tasks to them. So it makes it very easy to make sure that we're consistent in what we're doing and we're accountable and um, that our SOPs actually get followed instead of, you know, a lot of us create SOPs and we put them like in a Google Drive somewhere and we're like, hey, mm -hmm. why did you follow that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay to keep Google it. Drive. Yeah, it's it's a jungle already on yeah, my Google Drive. So yeah, I guess it's it's not the yeah. best way. So I mean, it's okay to have it in a Google Drive, but then where, how is that integrated into your processes so that when yeah. you're doing X, Y, or Z, you're actually, you know, doing that in a way that, um, you know, kind of makes sense there. So. Um, that's integrating and that's making sure that that person is like, okay, step two, you know, update the SEO description on the YouTube. Uh, here's the template right here. Like, okay, I marked that complete. Step three, create the blog. Okay, here's the process for creating the blog. The, the Google Doc is embedded right inside of that Asana task. It's right there, you know. It's a link that just gets carried through every task. And then you have no excuse. If you skipped following that SOP and you mark that task complete and that task is assigned to you, we got a problem here, right? You're either not following the SOP or, but then you really don't have an excuse. You can't say, well, I, I didn't know where that SOP was. I didn't even know we had an SOP. Oh yeah, you did, it's right there, right? <laughs> so that's really, really helpful. Uh, at least it's been helpful for me. And then just yeah. learning Asana, like, you know, I started when I was just by myself, I started doing everything in Google Tasks and Google Keep. 
um, and Google Calendar, and that was really helpful for me. But then when I hired somebody, I was like, ooh, how do I give them access to my Google tasks? How is this gonna work? And my good friend, Zara Cruzan, she owns a branding agency here in uh, San Antonio, and we teach classes locally at some of the um, local business organizations here. Um, she's just a really good friend and her and I have coffee dates, like local coffee dates where we kind of open the curtain of our business and we go, okay, this is what I got going on. This is what I'm doing. And she showed me her process in Asana. And I was just like, it was this massive aha moment for me. And I was like, oh, oh I need to do that. Oh, that makes sense. So we started implementing Asana thanks to Zara, but that's why it's important too to find local entrepreneurs in your community. Even if it's not like, even if they're not doing the same exact thing, right? If you both have agencies, like get behind the curtain with each other, show, you know, open them, you got nothing to lose. They're not your competitor, right? <laughs> like even if they are your competitor, you could both be made better together and take more of the market, yeah, right? Yeah. So open the curtain, spend time with other entrepreneurs, get out there, go to events, because it'll change your life. You know, have that ability to just say like, look, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put myself out there um, and I'm gonna see what the universe has for me and you will be absolutely overwhelmed and blown away, I promise. <laughs> Amy, Amy. Oh my God, I knew this was going to be great, but I mean, what you just shared with us is, uh, is beyond anything I've expected. It's really, really inspiring and, and really, I mean, it's goosebump stuff, yeah, so, Aww. oh my God, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think we can make like at least 20 shorts out of this video, which will all have like the little insights and inspirational and, and, and great advice and yeah, it's it's been it's been really it's been really good to have you here and to speak to you and to listen and I, I had no clue about like most of the things that you shared just now I, I didn't know that this was happening and this is how you you know came to where you are today and it's uh, I find it really inspiring I think uh, I'm gonna watch this video myself a few times you know just to take note of all your advices and tips and, and recommendations. Dano, oh, thank yeah. you so much. It, that's very humbling to, you know, I have so much respect for you and everything that you do. And um, it's just really, it's really humbling to be able to just share my story and, um, and hopefully it inspires someone. And, um, oh, you yeah. know, that's, that's just, it's really wonderful when somebody tells you they want to hear your story. It's like, okay. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> I, I know, I know. It's, it's not the regular request, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, not, not, I, I feel really overwhelmed with all the things that come, you know, when you just open the stage and, and let people just, just talk, you know, just listen. And, and, you know, all the things that you shared today, I think there's so much incredible stuff uh, and, yeah, I, I, I'm very sure that this will inspire many people who would have the time and the patience to listen. Uh, so uh, I just hope that they will. I mean, anyone who has made it to minute 53 in this video, congratulations. Call me, we go for a beer. I mean, that's. <laughs> but I'm sure there will be some. There will be some who will made it until this point. And uh, I mean, for everybody else, we can still summarize stuff. And yeah. So I just want to say thank you so much, Amy. It, it was an even greater pleasure than expected. So yeah, let's stay in touch and uh, let's spread the word about your incredible life story. All right. Thank you so much, Dano. Thanks, everybody, for listening.